Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial where we'll be seeing how to transform this image into something more professional like this so that it feels like the backdrop is covering the entire frame. We are going to be using some AI tools for this. So in case you don't have the real Photoshop, which comes through Creative Cloud, you can get it via the link in the description because you will be able to get a seven day free trial. Also, I've given the link to download this image so that you can work along with me. That is also in the description. So let's get started. So this is a fairly challenging image because if you think of it, there are a lot of areas that need to be filled using these AI tools like generative fill or content aware fill. So first of all, whenever you are in such a situation, one of the ways by which you can get more accurate and reliable results is to reduce the amount of area that is supposed to be filled, if it's possible. And in this case, it is possible because if you look at this composition, there is a lot of room to crop this image. So what we can do here is we just go to the crop tool. We don't really need to fill these areas, right? So we can just crop this because we don't this will look fine anyway. We don't need so much space above the head. So even something like this should be fine. And now if I just fill this up, you can see this suddenly looks less challenging now because mainly we have to worry about this area which needs to be filled up. Now, whether we use content aware fill for this, which is again AI powered, or we use the AI generative fill feature, we will need to have this area selected because these tools can only work after uh, a selection has been made. So now the question is, do we select this area or can we do something better? So usually in these cases, it's a good idea to actually make the opposite selection. That means select the subject and in this case, the backdrop and then just invert it. So let me show you. So if I go here and if I hit select, select subject, and hopefully Photoshop should be able to at least get uh, her in the selection. Let's wait for this. So you can see most of this job has been done. And when you talk about this part, we really don't have to be too careful. These parts of the backdrop here, that's because anyway, this part will be filled up using those AI tools. So even if, if even if a bit of it goes out of the selection is perfectly fine. So let's say we can take something like maybe a polygonal lasso tool or yeah, that should be fine because then you can draw in straight lines. So now I need to add to this selection because ultimately, if you think of it, we are trying to get to this selection of the bad area where you can see the rest of the studio. So anything apart from that. So we have her, but now we can hold down shift so that we can add to this existing selection and how the polygonal lasso tool works is just click and drag. So something like this should be fine. Let me just... If it moves out of the frame, you can just hold down space bar. Okay, that will bring that um, palm icon and then you can just move around easily. I'm just trying to make sure everything is here and up till here. So you don't have to be like too perfect about it because anyway, not enough light is falling there. And that's it. So we can now hit enter and we've got pretty much most of our selection are made. Just we'll have to zoom into some of the parts here just to fine tune this. And this can be done very easily just using one of the manual tools. For example, we can go on to the lasso tool. Now we need to remove this from the selection so I can hold down Alt Option this time because that's the stand, okay? Uh, we also need to just remove this part of our shoe, okay? Maybe add just this little part, so Shift. So whenever you add shift, whenever we remove alt option, okay? Now this part needs to be subtracted, right? So we can just, so now here she's got a bit of her laces and all. So for this, what we can do is we can use something more accurate, which is the object selection tool. And remember, we are trying to take away. So we're going to hold down alt option. Make sure this is on the lasso mode so that we can just draw around it like this and give the task to Photoshop to get this done accurately. So you can see it has got the outline, but it has just missed out on those uh, laces here. Let's just try once again. This time we'll need to add things. So let's just hold on shift while doing this. And yeah, you can see this time it's got it. Even if it's not 100% perfect, not enough light is falling on it. So it's okay. And for this, let's just try once with the object selection tool. It's just that the contrast is so low between the areas that might struggle, but you can see it does a pretty good job, right? Uh, for these areas that are in between, we need to just add this quickly. There any other areas like this? Let's just zoom out. Oh, I don't think so. I think we have pretty much 
a perfect selection right here. Now what we can do is we just need to invert it, right? We just need to get it. Because if we had just followed the way of selecting this first, it would have been way more challenging than the way we've done it now, okay? But now if I go with this active selection, just inverse it or invert it, and you can see that we have been able to get this. Now the question is, how do we fill this up? So we've got basically got two options when it comes to using the AI tools. One is the AI generative fill feature, and the second is the content aware fill feature. Now with generative fill, the problem is whenever you have the selection on the edge of a body part, it can distort that body part because generative fill actually produces an image to fill up this area, which is AI based, right? But content aware fill, even though it is also an AI powered tool, it works in a different way that it doesn't generate an image, it actually fills up the pixels, right? So it's not going to distort those body parts. So when you are taking a call between using these two tools and you're in such a situation, it's always a good idea to opt for content aware fill first in case that doesn't work, go for generative fill, okay? So what we're gonna do is with this active selection, I'm gonna right click, go to content aware fill. And this is a fairly easy tool to use. Photoshop is just gonna give you uh, this overlay, which basically determines the sampling data, which it's using to fill up this area. It's gonna give you a preview of how it's doing the job right now, according to this sampling data, but you can see a lot of her is coming in this part. That's because if you see the automatic data that uh, Photoshop generated, it actually has taken her pretty much all the way. So by default, we get this minus brush or the subtraction brush. We can just tell Photoshop, you know what, she is not supposed to be a part of this. So this is something where Photoshop still lacks that when it comes to automatically detecting and removing the subject from the sampling data is still not good enough. But now if we do even do something like this, this is gonna improve drastically as you can see here, okay? So maybe just remove these parts also, the parts on her skin and this and this, and maybe now you'll definitely get a better result. So you can see this is filling it up pretty well. And the best part is it doesn't really distort that particular, uh, you know, the hands and all, or the uh, forearms in any way or the legs, okay? There might be some issues. Those are, will come because of the selection that we've made, okay? Just the, on the edges might be a bit rough. We'll also correct that later on towards the end using a generative fill. But right now we're just mainly concentrating on whether this got filled well or not. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to get rid of these marching ants. Now the problem, the next step is that right now it looks like this is on the side, like this from the perspective and the angle, that this is a wall on her right side. We don't want that. It, we want it to appear like this is a backdrop behind her and under her. So we need to get rid of this and this, which is giving that 3D look to this, okay? So before we can do that, we need to stamp everything onto a new layer. We're gonna be a bit destructive because right now, if you think of it, these are two separate layers. So let's just open up a new layer. Let's use the shortcut control command, Alt Option Shift E to fill this up. And now we're being a bit destructive, but everything is on this layer. So now let's move on to this step where we remove these two things. So a couple of tools can help us here. We don't always have to go to AI tools. If there are manual tools which can work very fast in the job, then it's okay to use them also. For example, in this patch tool or the spot healing brush tool family, we can use a lot of these tools, okay? For example, the spot healing brush tool can just be used for something like this and it'll just do the job. You can even try it on this part, but usually I prefer using the patch tool for something like this. But you can see it doesn't do a very bad job, but I just feel the patch tool works equally fast and it just gives more superior results where you just encircle the problem area and just drag it on to a nice area, like a smooth area. It's just gonna blend in very well. So it just removes that like this. Similarly for this, you can do the same thing, take it from a good area and that's gonna get rid of it. Now you can see it starts to look something like a backdrop, okay? Now in this tutorial, I'm not concentrating on making this backdrop smooth. It has a lot of tonal variation because that involves a separate workflow invo involving generative fill. If you are interested in that, I already have a few tutorials on that and the best one I feel is this one, the link that is hovering on top. Uh, you can watch that later on if you wanna learn how to use the AI generative fill to make the backdrop smooth just by writing the prompts, okay? Here, we're gonna skip that though. I am gonna show you one manual tool which can work very quickly to do this. But before we go on to that, there's one more step, which is we need to zoom in to uh, this part. So not with this, just get rid of this. So we're gonna take our zoom tool because there might be some issues on the arm. Actually, we are not facing those issues here, but something like this, right? This is coming mainly because of our own uh, 
selection problems that we had made. So we could have been more careful. But when I'm facing issues like this, sometimes just make a, a bit of a selection like this and just run generative fill on an empty prompt. And usually it does a fairly decent job of uh, fixing this. So let's wait for the results here. So you can see, right, something like this. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but it just looks more cleaner. You get three variations also, and you can try different generations, but I feel the first one looks good. So you can see, right, this overall now looks much better. Maybe we can just use the patch tool just on this area again, because we are still seeing that separation. Uh, so we need to just, before we can do this, we need to stamp everything onto a new layer. Again, using that same shortcut that I talked about before and something like this. Now, finally, if you just want to mix things up a bit, what I can suggest is just duplicate this layer once just to make it slightly smoother, okay? Uh, we can take the good old mixer brush tool, which is in the brush panel here, the last one. And here, make sure you select a clean brush because mixer brush is just going to mix these uh, tonal variations that we have here, the different colors that we have here, which is causing it to look slightly not uh, too smooth, okay? Uh, so make sure this is a clean brush and this is your setting. That means the first setting of load the brush. No, don't select it. Okay, don't press it. Clean the brush after each stroke. Yes. And the only other important setting is wet. This means how wet your brush is or how aggressive this is. 10 to 15%, something like that is fine. And this is just like a water thing. Think of it like a normal, you know, paint brush where you're just mixing colors is slightly wet. And wherever you run it, it's just going to mix those areas. You can just make it slightly smooth. And the reason we're doing it on a separate layer is because if we just are slightly aggressive, don't run on the subject, otherwise you'll mix that also. But if you're slightly aggressive and we feel it is looking a bit fake, we can always just decrease the opacity because we have the real untouched layer underneath. Okay, Maybe something like this. I'm not being too careful, just being slightly fast right now. But now, like if we compare to this, it's a quick way to just do this, but if it, if it looks too fake, you want it to look a bit, re bit real, on this top layer, you can just decrease the opacity. So let's say we keep it around this much. Now if we compare this to this, this looks real and it's not bad as far as smoothness is concerned. But like I said, if you want to learn how to really get a very smooth, seamless paper-like look, check out that video that came on top. I'll probably leave the link to that in the description of this video also. So you can see that we've gone from this to this, and I think the results here look really, really good. Now you can see that even with the AI features, you really need to know some of the basics of Photoshop to be able to use these features. Well, that's why I have a completely free Photoshop course, which has 20 videos, which is completely meant for beginners so that you can learn all these basics. Check that out. The link will be given in the description. And if you are someone you are interested in learning about how to use the different AI tools inside Photoshop, not just generative fill, not just content aware, not just generative expand, which I usually taught, but all the other AI tools like the neural filters also, then check out my Photoshop generative AI editing masterclass course, which is a very long course. It's available via Udemy. The links to both the free course as well as this course will be given in the description. I'm someone who's experimenting a lot with not just the AI tools in Photoshop, but also the other AI web apps that are out there and how it can help photographers when it comes to uh, photo editing. So if you want to follow all these experiments, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give a like to this video, and I'll see you next time.